going on, everybody? Whoop. Let me get my screen big so I can, I can see what's going on. Great to see everybody. It's an awesome day of the week. I don't know what day of the week it is. It's, it's hard to keep track. Today's Tuesday, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna have a great time uh, doing some crop here. Hope everybody is doing great. Uh, hope you're staying sane, doing all the right things that you're eating correctly, um, and uh, spending some 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 good time with your family and uh, communicating with every with all your friends. So anyway, let's get going. Uh, keep in mind that uh, you know our time here is. Uh, excuse me, one second. I need to switch this up a little bit. Boy, that is quite a delay. I'm watching myself about 10 seconds after I do what I do, so that's gonna, that's gonna throw me off. Um, uh, remember, we're not focusing on fitness on these particular videos in the evenings. Uh, we have a lot of those. I have been loving the uh, ones from Fit to Fight, so uh, uh, definitely check those out. That, they look like, a lo it look like a lot of fun here. Uh, all right. Wait, today is Wednesday? I promise you, if you had held a gun to my head, I would not have said it was Wednesday. All right, so we're just going to kind of, kind of start warming up with some, uh, some foot movement. I'm just moving back and forward. All right, uh, as, as you're doing this, whether you're throwing strikes at any time, you're moving, uh, I want to say the word check. If I say the word check, I want you to stop wherever you are, and I want you to lift up your front leg, okay? I want... When you lift up your front leg, I want it to look like this. My body did not move. I did not have to go, I did not have to lean back in order to pick up that knee. Let me give you a better perspective here. Uh, what we're looking at here, in boxing they refer to it as sitting on your punches. In other words, I'm sitting here and my spine is erect and I'm, I'm able to rotate. If I lean forward even the slightest, and my spine goes forward right here. Sometimes rotating doesn't feel the same. It doesn't carry the same weight. So one way we do that is we learn how to, it's just like as if you were checking a kick, whoa, in Muay Thai or kickboxing where you bring up, uh, bring up that, that shin. Uh, I should be able to do that without having to lean and pull back my spine to get it up. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. I'm just kind of working here. Uh, if you've got something that you're striking towards, you're just using that as a reference, moving left and right. I'm working static strikes. I'm working half step and full step. Boom, 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 in and out. Good, let's just, uh, let's go with only uh, jabs with a, with a half step. Okay, I'm in and out. Boom, I'm not close enough to my target here, so I step in and I throw that strike. Then I'm out of there. Let's move to a cross with a half step. Look at my stance here. If I'm throwing the jab, I step right towards the target. If I'm throwing my cross, I may want to step slightly off angle to let that thing come right through the uprights. Think of their hands being up. If I throw it here, I'm having to go across if I step right towards them. So I step slightly outside so that it goes right down the middle. Here, the jab is going to go right down the middle. So, uh, right cross with half steps. Ready to go. I want my timing. I don't want to get there and then throw the strike. I'm losing all the benefit of that momentum. So I want to time it. My foot is planting. I'm still moving as I throw that strike. Right or left now. Good. Uh, 
Let's, uh, same thing, half step. I'm gonna be throwing a, uh, now I'm gonna throw this right first, and then I'm gonna switch to a hook. Boom, and then I'm gonna get out. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this a full step now. Boom, throw the cross, throw the hook, come back. Throw the cross, throw the hook, get out. Advancing right, hook, get out. Rest, rest, rest. Good. Now, one of the things that uh, if you line up with me here, and so from what I see here, the fit to fight signs right behind me. I throw this cross, boom. Notice how my head got offline. You see that fit to fight sign? Boom, all of a sudden now you can kind of see behind. I throw that left, boom. My head gets offline behind the shoulder. Okay, good. So what that does is allows me to be chambered for that hook, no matter where it's going. So on here, I throw that right, I'm over here. It could be a simple hook, boom, right in here. My entire body weight is here on my left, and it shifts over here to my right. I did not even swing my arm that time. I didn't swing my arm. If I end up after this strike and this is close to my body, I have wasted all of my body weight. If it looks like this, and I'm here, this hip shoulder could have been all the way over here and driven all of that power in there. So again, I'm throwing that cross, boom, and I'm missing on purpose here because I know you don't have a target. So I'm throwing it here. It chambers me. I'm ready to throw this. I'm ready to shift that weight from left to right. Boom. And drive it over there. Okay. Exaggerating, obviously. Letting my eyes wander all the way over here. But I'm just showing the, the transfer of weight. Okay. So throw the cross. Throw the hook. There you go. Rush. And get back out. I'm stepping in with that cross. I'm chambered. Rush. Getting back out. Rush. 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 What's possible here? I throw that cross. His hands come up. Whoa. So now, got a lot of options. I'm chambered for this hook. I can lower my level. Rush. Throw the strike into the body. Uh, I could just make this lateral, coming from the side. I could uh, do a hybrid, uh, not so much an uppercut, but slight uppercut, slight hook. It's a shovel, a shovel hook, right into the body, right into the ribs. Okay, good. So I'll do that, why? Boom, this shoulder and hip, my spine's, Still upright, but my weight's over here. It transfers. I angle up into the body. All right, ready? Rush, 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 rush. You hit somebody down there, what are they gonna do? They're gonna say, oh, that hurt. No, they're gonna bring their hands down. So one thing I should always be ready for, I throw this, I go low, boom. Chamber back and go high. Okay, I go up. Chamber back. Drive through the target as much as makes sense. Then chamber right back. From the front, it looks like this. Again, here I am. I throw the strike. I'm chambered. I feel good here. I'm not off balance. Boom, driving it up here, back. Elbow comes up high, boom, here. I say elbow high, especially if you're short like me. You don't want to run into all the elbows and forearms. So, boom, rush, rush. Good. Boom, rush, rush. Good. Now, for you more uh, advanced students, there's a very important body uh, thing that I'm doing here. When I throw a hook, 
it's sometimes uh, you waste energy by taking that opposite shoulder and throwing it back. Remember, I want all my energy going up in here. If anything goes back, then I'm throwing energy that way. So if you saw me do this here, I just threw a lot of weight back. Now it helped me in my rotation and I felt good on the visual. Oh yeah, that, but I wasted energy. It would be very similar to throwing a punch where you literally rotate. Rotate like the earth rotates on its axis. 50% forward, 50% back. I'm rotating, but I, am I really creating force there? So one thing that I always do is as much as possible, any energy that I have in my body, I want that gross body weight at least going along path towards the target. So in this particular case, I do have to rotate, but I want to rotate, I want to rotate like a hinge rotates. I want this to stay here. One way that I can do it is just simply by shifting my body. So instead of throwing this uh, rising hook, this shovel hook like this, here, I drive everything over that way. Oh, so that my whole body weight is behind it when I hit, okay? So it's the difference between this and this, and the difference between uh, this and this. Oh. So anytime I throw a strike, a uh, hook, sorry, I want, I'd like to even step into it if at all possible, but at least use that little bit of give that I have here. So that it's not just about this right here, but add to it. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. So uh, hooks. Let's uh, do about five more of those. Throw, throw the cross. Rising. Boom. You can end up throw a cross at the end too as well. on that one. We want to look at uh, bear hugs from behind. Okay. And level one, I think sorry, my camera here a little bit. Wait. Oh, I see. This is, this is back. Are you, you're saying this is backwards? <laughs> so my it's just, I have two left hands. That's the problem. All right, so, so my, my right, so right now I'm raising my right hand. Does that look right to you? Or even when I look at it, it's, yeah, it's the opposite, Caroline. Oh, you know what? I got the, uh, it's, it's my camera. Hold on one second. Sorry, this was helping me. So I will, I will help you by fixing this. Now you will not be able to see the Carolina self defense, but I think you'll be able to see. You'll be able to see everything you need. Much better, eh? All right, great. Oh gosh, I don't want my face getting so close to the camera. Do not look at that. Is that right? Yes. Okay. All right. And. Uh, uh, level one, the main idea behind defense is to be a hard target. I am hard to get. Hey, stay back. I am hard to hit. And if you do hit me, I'm hard to hurt. You know, so uh, all of those. But there are, there are defense. Uh, but then sometimes it's not just about striking or grabbing. Sometimes, well, the grabs 
are specific attacks. And one of these I may not be ready for. So we start looking uh, at this issue of grabs from behind. So in level one, we still just want to be a difficult target. We want to be able to respond quickly to any kind of threat. I know that my friend here, Bob, is unarmed. So don't make fun of him about that. But if he did have arms, uh, his bear hug would take one of two different uh, positions. It would be over the arms or it would be under the arms. So uh, when we go over the arms, we want to treat this just like a headlock uh, from behind. So this is a really good uh, piece of uh, equipment. You could, you could attach this to anything that's head height or more. And I can work on my headlock from behind, which means anytime, anytime their arm is outside of my shoulder, then I don't want to do, I don't want, you know, I don't want to involve myself and get closer to that arm for whatever reason. Why, why should I? If it's, if it is outside here and I can create a structure, I stop them where they are, arrest their um, invasion there, and drive, you know, and drive away, drive away from it and turn in. So uh, our early, when we say early, means preempted. In, in other words, before the real threat, which is when what? When their hands lock. When their hands lock, that's when things have changed. That's when they can drive their hips in and pick up. So I have to make sure that that never happens. So my uh, uh, so initially, I want to work two different ways. One is if the arm is still coming around, I want to get I want to get I want to get something to block it. I use two two different things here. I use this huge margin of error, this uh, very solid bone on the pinky side here, and I want to. He wants a little circle that he can get his arms around. I want to create a big circle. I drive this up. This is very flexible. It can be, his arms are here, here, here. Uh, that takes a little bit of training to make sure that, that I respond to the correct energy, but I want to stop him from getting in here, uh, getting his arms to where they can lock, and I want to get my hips away. So keep that in mind. I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but this is one of the early drills that we do. Uh, here comes an arm around this way. Big weapon big blocking here and then the other hand comes here because I want to help out number one and number two I want to control it whoa I want to control it I want to get my hips away when I do this right here I've just gone from being this big of a circle to a really big circle very difficult for anybody to get their hands locked uh, with any with any firmness there so whoa here oh. all right so I have to just use my imagination, okay? So here's his hand. I'm going here. Whoa, whoa. Okay. Now our standard move, when I am in this pocket, when I say in the pocket, I mean their arms are around here, but they are not locked yet. When they're locked, we go to a different technique. But during this time, I can still move out this way, okay? The moment that this happens, I stop the immediate threat of the hands getting locked, and we do something we call a step 180 hip clear. This is a very important technique, movement, because it does a lot of things, and it comes in all the time. Uh, anytime I'm in here and I need to clear space, I step, driving my hips as far away as possible. Just going to this uh, opposite side foot. And from here, I'm going to explosively turn my hips to immediately square up. And then I'm in this lane. This is why I put this uh, uh, belt here to show you the lane right here. Boom, and then I'll create space by taking my whatever leg is in front, which may be just kind of holding the fort down here, uh, making sure that they don't uh, 
uh, get in and get my hips, and then I create space. So this, this hip clear, step, uh, step, pivot, and get the leg back is hugely important every, from everywhere. So uh, I, I step, I pivot, and I turn. Other leg, step, pivot, and turn. It goes right down this. This line is hugely important because what I don't want is I don't want to be creating a circle. Circles are slower. It allows people kind of to get around. If I step, and instead of just simply whoop, rotating and explosively getting squared up, and I go here, and I take this leg back in a big circle, it allows this person a lot more opportunity to stay up, uh, to, to speed with me, to get around me, and to control, and to pull my posture down. So anyway, so this kind of step pivot in here. So this is a very easy drill. Uh, from, from your perspective, make sure I'm in here, right? Okay, I'm in here. The arms are coming over to the side. Whoa, here. Boom, boom, boom. Getting those hips away. All of these are good. And the immediate move, if I can stop them here, is to step, pivot, and create space. Whoa, step, pivot, create space. Whoa, step, pivot, clear the hips, make space, okay? All right, so now the only difference, uh, or the only uh, variation there, as we said, as we kind of mentioned, is I'm, I'm imagining here that right now I am inside the pocket. These are his... These are his flimsy little arms, right? If I'm in here, whoa, I can turn. If the moment that these come over the shoulder, then turning in may or may not work. It depends. If I've got some hip space here and I can just drive this in here, it could be, it could be fine. So I'm not going to say that you can't do it. However, I want my body to be trained that any time energy is coming over like this, that my immediate mousetrap response, uncontrollable, boom, is to drive those hips out in the same kind of movement that we do here with the uh, uh, headlock from behind, okay? All right, so with that, I can use this here, and I'm just going to hold it here. This is my movement. It's still the same step pivot, except now I'm going the opposite way. His arms out here. I'm going to step and pivot here and stay on the inside of that arm. The moment that it comes over here, I'm going to step and pivot out the other way. Why do I do that? Because he's providing the energy here. Boom. I want that to happen. Okay. Now, the, it's, it's good that I'm using this because I do not see this arm going over here. <laughs> so it's not, it's not me, don't take this. That just doesn't happen in real life. They've got their body weight. So this is more staying still. It's me that's moving and me that is posting this. Good. So I can work this on both sides. This comes over here. This is also, this is a, a very common solo drill in, uh, in judo and uh, grappling, where, where I'm just kind of working, well, the same thing, step, pivot when I, when I go for throws and things like that. Step. So you can kind of play around with those, uh, probably find a lot of those on YouTube. Okay, so those are some kind of solo drills, uh, working, bear hug, bear hug threat, from behind, turning in. Remember, of course, if I'm turning in, if I can't make space, I can certainly throw a 
throw a clearing strike as I go, or maybe he's just coming so fast that it ends up me being here in the seatbelt because he's driving forward, and even though I'm creating space, he's still closing that space. Okay? All right. So, um, uh, all right. So let's review bear hug from behind, but now, oh crud, his hands got, his hands got locked. What is he trying to do? What is the purpose of locking his hands? Control. Uh, perhaps the desire to fling me around, throw me to the ground, or pick me up, throw me to the ground, pick me up, take me away <laughs> to the ice cream van somewhere special. Uh, so I number one is our first principle is once those hands lock, I have to base in space. I never allow, when somebody's hands get around me, I never am an easy target where I'm just sitting there allowing them to lock in. And how do they lift up? If I, even with, even with uh, Mr. Uh, Bob here, I want to lift him up. Boom. I got to get my hips in and get close. If even keeping a little bit of space between hips makes the average person uh, extremely unlikely to be able to to lift up for any length of time. Even if they do it like, oh, and then you shake, and then you come back down and you get into a base. So the phrase that we use a lot is base in space. Base in space. Here comes this arm around, I'm basing, I'm spacing. I'm getting hip, my hips away from him. Even if the hands grab, whoa, here. Uh, okay, so right now we are imagining that the grip is below my arms, right? There, it's coming down here. Actually, let's go ahead. I'll continue to use this. May it help? Okay. So I'm imagining that the grip is here. Okay. So let me make this a little bit easier for myself. For the moment, I'll tie it here. Here comes the hands. The hands are locked. It's basing and spacing. I want to get. I'd love to get my hips away. If I can't get them away, then I want to get a little bit of an angle. I'm taking my thumbs and keeping my posture. Very important. There is no, none of this going on here. This puts no pressure on his grip. I need all pressure on his grip. Okay. Uh, as you can imagine, his arms are shaped like yours. From here, he could stretch out this way as far as he could, you know, in other words, uh, this is his maximum length right here. So if you push his hands out this way, or I drive his hands out this way, this is where he would be the best, right? So I want to go slightly to one angle or the other, slightly to my right, slightly to my left, so that his grip is more like, like this. Here than it is here where you can hold on the whole time. So my first, my first response in just like the mousetrap thing. I mean, this is in my system is to base and space. My feet are fully on the floor. My hips are down in here. My thumbs have jammed uh, to in his thumb and wrist area here ready to explode out. From here, my first, uh, my uh, second move after this is to explosively drive his hands down here while I explode my hips out. The vast majority of times when you do this, especially if it's very early in the grip, the hands are gonna break. Once they're broken, then I go back to, it's just a bear hug threat, where I get control, step, pivot, create space, right? Okay, so here I am, Bob's flimsy little arms, and I'm just working uh, my uh, imagination. Here comes this threat, whoa, and threat, whoa, I cannot, uh, I, you know, a lot of people say, why don't you throw strikes from here? Yes, but remember the principle. The principle is 
deal with the threat first. If I'm sitting here going, no, oh, stop, oh, and I start throwing strikes, but yet my body, I have not created any base or space, I'm going to be going like this while he throws me through the air or up, boom, and plopping me on the ground. Okay. All right. So uh, I have to, I have to create that, uh, create the base in space, and then hopefully I break the grip right then and there. Okay. Um, uh, so base, explosively drive the hands down using your body weight. <laughs> Slightly to the side. If you have somebody that can help you practice this, especially uh, women, if you have a, if you have your, your husband or older son or something like this, tell them to reach around and grab and hold on like this. Do not tell them to grip like this. They're going to rip their hands up when you explosively uh, drive out and it can be kind of miserable real fast. Uh, a little tidbit here. If by chance I'm actually, maybe I'm a little too good at creating the space. So I kind of based out and their hands are locked here, but I kind of created the space and I'm trying to be explosive, even though I already made space. <laughs> and they're just, it's just kind of extending their arms a little bit and it's not working. Sometimes I will take their grip and for a very, very brief moment, whoop, I will drive my hips back in. What? Why would I do that? Because their arms being extended while I'm explosive is the reason that this extension of the arms works. So if I'm just at the very edge and their extension is this, then it doesn't have a lot of effect on them. So when their hands are here and I'm driving here, it's not working, I may drive the hips back as far as I can under my control, whoop, here. And as I do so, I'm driving their grip further down towards my leg, towards my thigh, one side or the other. Maybe they were here, oh gosh, this is not working. So I immediately drive those hips back and now I have chambered this to where their arm is still extended, but I'm not. I'm ready to extend those hips out. And so what happens is their arms ex are extended. And then my, when I extend my hips, I'm like, oh my gosh. And it really, it's very, very painful. So uh, anyway, so here's, I'm imagining, here comes the attack. Whoa. <laughs> Once I've separated those hands, break some fingers if I have to, what is it? Step, pivot, and create space. All right. Well, what do you do if none of that works? <laughs> okay. What, what if for some reason you are really struggling here? Well, it, the principle is always make space. And if you can't take the space, then you have to create the space. How do I create uh, the space or how do I at least create the distraction or the opportunity to make some space? Strikes, right? All right, so remember, uh, this guy's in a bad situation. You know, his hands uh, are totally um, busy, okay? So there are a lot of strikes. The easiest one in the world, the back of your head, yes! Okay, I am not saying that this is going to feel great, that you're going to really be happy about it tomorrow, but let me tell you something. If somebody's grabbing around here, it's going to be worth it. I will throw, I want to throw a, uh, uh, the, I want to strike with the hardest part of my head. I want you to think of wearing a crown, and the two best parts are right here on the front of the crown and right here on the back of the crown. So I would always prefer to throw a strike from me being low up higher to them. That will always be the best scenario. Uh, so as I base in space, it's not working. I tuck my head in my neck and I drive it straight up using my body as the, as the weapon. 
and this is the striking surface. That's compared to anything that looks like a knot. Take this. Not that that wouldn't work, but it can also hurt you as well. Uh, one second, let me scooch this in. Just a tad. All right, great. All right, so what other, oh my gosh, what other strikes do I have? Riss up high. Riss heels into the tops of the feet right here. Oh my gosh, on the toes, on the shoestrings. Very, 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 very painful. Of course, I can always, he doesn't have a whole lot going on down here. Riss, riss. I can drive back. Uh, and this is both explosive as well as pushing off. It's all good. Uh, we are imagining that his uh, arms are underneath my arms. So I may not have access right here to a bladed strike, but you never know. It could, we could be off angle here. His arms are under here, but I can reach around and drive into the groin. I can drive the point of the elbow into the solar plexus, into the bladder. If I'm leaning forward, I can even drive this up into the chin. Yes, there it is. The infamous elbow number who can, who, can, who can write on there what elbow number this is? Us. Okay, boom. All right, anything. I just want to strike right along here. Everything is in here. Uh, again, his arms are down here. Then I'm going to have these number three elbows. Remember, for the most part, if he's square up to me, throwing this straight back is not going to work. i got to uh, turn my body. Uh, uh. But the thing is, remember, that's where his arms are, down here. So if his arms are down here, the principle is always you use what they don't control. If he controls up here, then I'm moving my body down here. If he's controlling down here, then I'm using what I have up here. Headbutts, elbows. What am I looking for? Opportunity. To do what? To create space. Turning back. Ah. Alright, so uh, this is a level two technique. Level one technique is simply being ready for the bear hug, being preemptive, being able to step, pivot, hit clear, create space, keep the keep the uh, seatbelt. If you need to throw strikes, if you have to, but use the hierarchy of space and get the heck out of there. Level level two, we start looking at all right now. Well, actually, level one, we do get the hands locked over the arms right here because that's a simple, uh, simplistic uh, response doing exactly what we do when they grab the head and neck or the headlock. Whoa, they, they wrap around the chest like this. Remember, anytime that arm, boop, it goes over my shoulder. Oh yeah, boom. I'm gonna be driving in here and uh, step pivoting outside the back door rather than inside the pocket. So, uh, could it get any worse? Yes. What if, I'm not able to respond to this at all. And next thing you know, I'm up in the air. This one, we can't drill uh, by ourselves unless you have the ability to levitate. So, anybody, viewer, viewer, okay. But if by chance, even if I, oh my gosh, this dude is lifting me up so high, my, my two strikes, both bear hug from the front here being lifted up, I extend the leg back in a straight line as far as I can and drive it in here. I'm going to lower him down so I can make sure I don't kick that plastic there. If I get lifted up here, whoa, I'm bringing that knee up as high as I can and I am driving it back. Right, using my heel right into his groin. Groin, 
or stomping on the knees, on the legs, the knees, and all I'm looking for at that point is simply to return to my base, and that's where I continue from there. So it's being up in the air, very precarious. Whoa, I'm getting turned over here, so I have to kind of practice that, but we can only practice that uh, with our with some part with some partners. So uh, great. Any last questions? Well, we yeah, weight while being lifted exactly. Good. So these are barrels, but again, don't forget these are things that you can work on your own. You don't have to have a bob. Just attach it to something. Step, pivot, going out the back. Step, pivot, going to the inside. This is an arm, right? Whoa, this is an arm. Oh no, it broke the barrier of the shoulder. Oh, I go back here. As time goes on, like I said, this is, uh, this is kind of what I work for judo. For judo and throws. Step, pivot. So, anyway, great time. Good to see everybody. Uh, at least your names and your comments. Appreciate everybody uh, just keeping, keeping in touch. Uh, we've got to do something fun here. I keep saying, I, I'm just learning all this technology with, uh, with uh, Zoom and with some of these virtual games that you can play with people. Uh, anybody want to play a game tonight? Psych, look up Psych, P-S-Y-C-H. We've had a lot of fun with it at our house, with our, uh, playing virtually with our kids in, around the state, around the world. It's been a lot of fun. So anyway, uh, great time, guys. Uh, shoulders back, and Kida. You're the best.